Here's a couple of jets. I wanted to show you how the jet check valve assembly works on my jets. Works the same on spraying systems jets too. Spraying systems has always had these threads inside the back end of their jet, mainly because of a Stanley steamer, I think, if I got the history right. This goes back 30 years or so. That allows Stanley to use these super tiny jets, smaller than the O1s. They're like 0075 and 006 or something crazy. Uh, we don't do that much anymore now, nowadays. You know, O1s are about as small as we go. A lot of good cleaners cleaning with O1s, nothing wrong with that. They're going to get great dry times. They just crank up the pressure a little more to get the flow they need. Uh, but the standard is the 015 jet. There's an 01. There's an 015. This is actually the ProChem Quad Jet jet. Stock jets for the ProChem Quad Jet 95015. Okay. But 10 years ago or so, I came up with this stubby check valve. Why? Because ProChem Quad Jet users were complaining about drippy jets. So we took the check valve that Stanley had for their one, got rid of the jet screen because it wouldn't fit in the manifold anyway, and made a little short cap. Uh, ball's about to roll off on me. Okay, I wanted to show you the difference in these two assemblies. Then later on, I made the jet screen cap. Okay, so we got basically the same setup for. Uh, both of these jets, there's a spring and then a ball that sits on top of the spring and then your choice of cap, either a jet screen cap or the original stubby cap that I made for the ProChem Quad Jet. You put a, you put a glide on the ProChem Quad Jet, you need uh, an extension to compensate for the height of the glide, right? So that's where I made this first extension. Little shorty guy. It's perfect with the original stubby and it compensates for the height of the glide, about a three eighths to half inch that the, the glide contributes. Okay. So uh problem with the original stubby cap got a big old hole through it, doesn't it? It doesn't filter out much in the way of debris, like nothing. Whereas the jet screen cap is about 95% effective. Still get some stuff through, still get clogged jets, but not nearly as often. Quad jet, ProChem Quad Jet one, lots of clogs, especially if you've got unfiltered water coming in through your truck. Notice something common to both of these jets. The big spring, big end of the spring goes in first. You see that? Same deal here on the uh, jet screen cap. There's the spring. The big end of the spring goes in first. Then the ball sits on top of the spring, of course, and your jet screen goes on top, screws in. Same with uh, spraying systems jets. Same threads, basically. Okay. So you can buy the jet screen. You can buy the original stubby cap. You can screw them into whatever jet you have. You can create a drip free jet. You can add the jet screen, now it's clog free. You got both, okay? You can clean your jets with the, uh, the jet cleaning tool, either multi-strand or, or dual strand. Uh, clean over a towel, get you some faucet water to rinse it out. Now let's talk about what else clogs up. What is this thing called here in the metering block of your inline injection sprayers? I call it the nozzle bushing. It's this little guy here, okay? It's uh, one of the two things I replace on all the injectors you guys send to me. I'm always changing the one in here. See how it's brass? I don't know if you can see that. I'm always pulling the brass and putting in stainless. You go stainless, it'll last you a lifetime. This block will wear out before the nozzle bushing will. And it's critical critical to go stainless because there is like, you know, 400 PSI going through this device. If that's brass, it's going to erode away a lot quicker than if it's stainless. So that's why we're doing that. Yeah, another reason is uh, to get away from the brass is that originally a lot of the brass 
uh, injector blocks were using the wrong nozzle bushing. We, uh, I've watched this for years. And this one is wrong. This is my little tool to test it. Nothing fancy, is it? It's just a small paper clip. Paper clip. You know, we got we got two paper clips basically in the world today: the small one and the medium one, right? Pull out your small one right out of the desk drawer and, and test your metering tip. If your small paper clip doesn't go through, you got the wrong size nozzle bushing. You need to change it. Send it to me, I'll change it, or you can do it yourself. It's not easy to get these things out, but that's what I do. Um, another thing you'll notice is uh, the little yellow metering tips that we use on our injection sprayers. That same small uh, paper clip goes through. So it's a good test to see if you got the right size uh, nozzle bushing. Hey, wait a minute. It won't go through. The bigger paper clip won't go through, will it? It's not supposed to. Not supposed to. Okay. Good way to unclog your little yellow metering tip that's in your that's in your uh, siphoning injection sprayer right there is to pull off your tube and, and run your small paper clip through there. If it still doesn't flow, you probably need to send the thing in. Let me play with it. By the way, I don't like this design. Metering tips up here. I like the odor curve clamps because they never fail. Never. I mean, never. Okay? Uh, if it's installed correctly. Uh, so I make a draw tube that uses Odeker clamps and my cap has the threaded uh, port for the metering tip, okay, but we're not going to use it. We're going to slide down here to the bottom end of uh, the draw tube and uh, put a little threaded insert down in there and we're going to use our, uh, and we're going to install our metering tip there okay and then put the uh, filter over it okay so if you buy a ten dollar draw tube assembly from me I guarantee it's the best in the business it's a really good high quality uh, Surethane brand urethane tubing high temperature tubing perfect for injection sprayers that use hot water uh, it's got everything you need in a draw tube. Ten bucks. Killer deal. This this draw tube and this stainless nozzle bushing are the two things that I replace on pretty much every injector that comes through here. Why? Because they're always bad. This one isn't even used and it's already flimsy. Look at this. Lousy tubing. It's designed to fail. You get mine, you're going to get at least a good hard year of hot use, hot water usage out of this thing. Now here's some things that never clog. Jets bigger than 015, 02 jets, 025 jets. Yeah, I'm the guy that makes the 025 jet because we needed it. 03 jets, 04 jets, they never clog. Here's an injection sprayer uh, T-jet, kind of old style, but 8006. Look at that hole six times as big as these little jets. This is never going to clog, is it? Okay, that's never going to clog up. Can you see through there? Huge hole. Some of the injection sprayers still use the 05 jets and that might be a problem if you have that. Um, go to the 06 jet and see if that helps your draw. Here's the wash downer. Okay, there's no top hat strainer assembly in here. Not necessary, is it? You got an 06 jet it's a huge hole. That ain't never going to clog up. So we've talked about a few things that can clog up here on you. Uh, mostly jets. Get you a jet cleaning tool. Uh, use one strand to clean every jet you got. Uh, nozzle bushings, metering tips. These are the main things that clog up on you guys that are small that you're going to need some help with. Okay, hope this helped. Thanks for watching.